Hey, Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com. Today's video is sponsored by Loop Deck, but I'm actually really excited to show you this tool. I've been dying to try it out myself for a long time. So this is a new fully customizable tool that enables us to use knobs and buttons to do things for us. So why don't we just quickly unbox it? So I like the packaging. And when I look at this, it's actually a lot thinner than I expected. And the build quality is really, really nice. Wow. So these are actually made in Finland. And so there's the loop deck itself. And then we have a cable, which is a nice braided cable with a USB-C on either end. So it has the USB-A type connector. We can just use that adapter. So we just plug this into the USB-C, either on a Windows machine or a Mac. It'll work on both. So the Loop Deck CT, which stands for Creative Tool, comes with native support for Photoshop, for Lightroom Classic, for Premiere Pro, for Final Cut, and I've also added Ableton as well as Illustrator. But you can actually set this up to work with any application that you like. So we can set this up to access to you know, different functions that might not be so quick and easy to use in Photoshop. But also the other thing I like about it, because the fact it's so customizable, I like to set up a setup for each workflow. Say like I'm dodging and burning, I'll just set it up so I can just got the buttons there and I've got these knobs working specifically for that task. And you can very easily just tap a button and switch to a different task. So, um, so I can use this in conjunction with my keyboard and mouse and my tablet. So I might have my hand here, adjusting things like say my brush size while I'm painting with my Wacom tablet. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna look at two things. First of all, we're gonna look at the basics of how to set this up and what it can do. And then we're gonna jump in and actually use it in Photoshop and do a little bit of dodging and burning so you can kind of see it fit into the workflow. We're gonna use this on some images in a second, but I just wanna quickly give you an overview. So here's the uh, loop deck interface and you'll see there's three tabs up here the first one enables you to choose the device the one i have right now is the ct then there's the profile so as you can see there's all kinds of different applications available here and then you'll notice there's another thing here called workspaces so the workspaces as we choose a different workspace notice it enables us to put different commands in here so these are the ones that kind of come with it and of course we can customize this and put any of our own in here. So these buttons enable us to push on the button and, or we can turn the dials to do different things like change brush size and hardness and things like that. And, and we'll talk about all of that in a second. And also these are, you know, if we want to enable a tool, we just simply click on it. Now we have the ability to swipe. If we swipe across, this will enable us, as you can see here, we can have different pages. So you can set up multiple pages and to do that, all you need to do is see down the bottom here, you just simply click on the tab and you can add a page. Same thing going up and down. We can swipe up and down and we can get different commands. And to add an extra page here, we just simply click here and we can add a page so we can swipe up and down and use more than just the six options here. That button there takes us home. This one will take us into different workspaces. Now let's just talk about this dial here. The dial is really nice because this enables us to set up different things. So I can make the uh, brush hard or soft just by simply tapping there, turning it. We can change the size, opacity. We can zoom in or out of the document. We can change different things. And all of these can be programmed to do exactly what we want to do. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set up a new workspace that we're going to use and we're going to work on some photos. Why don't we set up something for dodging and burning? So what I want to do is go under the main workspace and then we're going to create new. And we're going to use this and also we can do this inside Photoshop or we can set them up for camera raw as well. So why don't we call this dodge and burn and I'm going to click OK. So the first thing maybe that I want to do is when I'm dodging and burning is reset foreground background colors. So I could just simply click here and notice there's a lot of different things we can add in here. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a simple keyboard shortcut. If we just click here, we record the shortcut. We're just going to hit the D key and we're going to call this reset colors. So this is one way we can do it. And I'm just going to hit save. Um, so why don't we take the brush flow and I'm going to drag that onto that top knob. Now that's going to adjust the flow. We can change blending mode. Let's drag that into the bottom. 
now we can cycle through blend modes. So I'm just gonna drag these onto the button. Okay, so these are definitely tools that I would use while I was dodging and burning. So as you see, what I'm doing is I'm setting this up for one particular task. Okay, so now we've got this workspace. Why don't we assign this workspace to one of these buttons? Loop deck device actions. I'm gonna grab a workspace. There's our dodge and burn workspace and I'm gonna drag that in, into number two. All right. So if we hit the home button, there's our home, tap on it there. There's the actions that we just set up. Another cool thing the loop deck can do is it can create macros, which are like actions. Why don't we create one now? We're gonna create another dodge and burn layer. The multi-action is gonna do one step at a time. This one's gonna do everything at once. So we're gonna create a macro. Rather than a shortcut, I'm gonna create an action. And what I wanna do is create a new layer. So let's go into Photoshop layers and we're going to create a new layer drag that in there that's step one next action what we want to do is we want to change the blend mode so we're going to create another action i'm going to go into overlay blend mode drag that in there and what we want to do is add another action and this time i'm going to put the shortcut i'm just going to do b that'll get the brush tool i'm going to add another one we're going to choose D is going to reset the foreground background colors to the default colors. Let's go here. And we want to drop our flow to 10. So we're going to do shift one. And why don't we set our opacity to 100? So we're just going to tap zero. Let's change the name of it. We're going to call this one Dodge Burn. And hit save. OK, so we're going to dodge and burn this dragon here. So why don't we look at some of the settings we've already created? So we're going to hit two. We're going to go into our workspace. And if you remember, we created this macro for doing dodging and burning. So what we need to do is we need to create a new layer. We need to put it into overlay blending mode. Then what we need to do is we need to grab the brush tool. We need to reset foreground background colors. And then I want to adjust the opacity to 100%. And then I want to change the flow to say 10%. We can do all of that in one button. Watch this. So we just tap dodge burn. All right, so I just tap this and look what we get. We get a brand new layer in overlay blend mode. Foreground background colors are reset to black and white. The brush tool is selected. And we've got our opacity at 100 and our flow at 10%. And now, of course, I can go in here and I can change things like the size of my brush just by turning this little knob. And so if I want to adjust the flow maybe to about 8, I can just kind of just go in here and just change the little knob there. I could use a keyboard shortcut, which would be shift one, but it would actually be shift zero eight really quickly. So as you can see, now we're starting to get a combination shortcut. So, so it's a lot easier just to use this dial. So one of the things I do like to do is not necessarily set up simple things in here, but set up things that could be buried under a menu or, you know, just things that you're going to be using repetitively. And then that way the loop that becomes efficient. Now, as far as zooming in and out, I will use this in combination with my Wacom tablet. So I can just pinch to zoom. Or if I want, I can go back home and we'll see we've got different options we can do here, which are actually quite efficient. So if I want to do things like zoom in and out, I can just tap here and I can zoom, zoom in. And now if I wanted to be doing things like now I'm working with the brush and I want to change things like the hardness and the opacity and the size, I can just put my hand on here and notice I can change the size of that brush. If I want to change the hardness, just tap here. If I want to change the opacity, I can tap here. Notice how those are changing. So keeping my finger right on there can actually be another efficient way of working. So right now we're going to paint with the black. We're going to add a little bit of shadow. So why don't I just paint that up here? And I'm just going to paint some shadow in here to add some dimension. Because I'm just going to speed this up. But as you can see, I'm using this to change things like brush size and opacity as I'm working. I'm also using pen pressure with my Wacom. But I'm just going to speed this up a little bit. All right, that's looking good. Maybe I want to add another uh, set. We're going to do uh, some dodging now that we've done burning. So we're going to tap here. It's going to create a new layer. So watch what happens to the blending mode. And then as far as the brush and everything, we've still got that, so we're fine. So now we're going to paint with the white brush. I just hit the X key to change this to white. Now we're going to go in and we're going to adjust the size and all that kind of fun stuff again.
Okay, and you get the general idea. So if we show you, there we are before. There's our shadows we added. There's our highlights we added. And you can see I'm just kind of using the loop deck for that. So the secret to using this is not to set it up for things that can easily be done with a single key keyboard shortcut. What you want to do is use it to save you time for things like, say, one button, convert to smart object. Also, for things like working with Premiere Pro, uh, when I'm editing video, this is great to be able to use this to jog shuttle, um, go through my timeline and do different things like that. So I think this is a cool device and if you use it wisely, it can really help you enhance your workflow and save you time, particularly when you're doing repetitive steps. So I'm curious what you guys think. Let me know in the comments underneath. And if you're new, hit the subscribe button, turn on notification, and you won't miss any of my tutorials and reviews. So do me a favor, smash that like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.